Hey everyone, this is Stevie Richards, and in today's video, we are going to discuss things you should consider when building a home gym in 2023. So just to give you a little bit of background, we don't currently have a full home gym. We do have two garage gyms, Garage Gym 1.0 and Garage Gym 2.0. You can check out the Garage Gym 1.0 tour, as well as the preview of Garage Gym 2.0 in our list of content here on the YouTube channel. But just to give you a little bit of background, we did initially want the garage gym to be the full-time gym. We wanted the garage gym to be the old school strength equipment, old school cardio, that type of stuff. So old school, and then this room, this second bedroom was gonna serve as the connected fitness home gym. It was gonna have stuff like the Tempo Studio. If we had gotten a smart bike, smart rower, anything with a screen that you follow along with classes or any kind of stuff that's labeled as a connected fitness uh, piece of equipment was going to go in this room. As you can see by everything here, it didn't quite work out that way. Although we could move the furniture out, still have this decoration and stuff like this along with that type of cardio and strength equipment. but we realized that there were certain things when we did have the home gym because we did turn the entire apartment, pretty much 90% of our apartment in Georgia into a home gym. Thank you to my wife uh, <laughs> for being an absolute saint and supporting uh, my vision for Stevie Richards Fitness and how we grew into a home and garage gym type of business. But when we looked at that and the different things that we didn't have time to consider. And we didn't really have a choice at the time. There was no detached garages or other type of areas or environments where we could film or do anything. So the home gym and turning the apartment into a home gym was the only choice. And it turned out to be a really fun choice to make, but it left us with certain information that we didn't know previous to that. So that's why I decided to make this video. And just to let you know, there will be a video on the garage gym side of this type of video. So things you should consider when building a garage gym in 2023, because that garage gym and now two garage gyms uh, is a whole new element of different parameters and different things to consider when you own one of those. So let's start with number one. It's probably the most obvious in all of the things to consider when you're building any gym, and that is your budget. So everyone, as far as I know, including myself, has a budget. I don't think there's anybody out there that has an unlimited source of income that they could do it. If they do, God bless you, that's great. But everybody is mostly on some sort of budget or has an idea that they don't want to overspend for garage gym, home gym, whatever gym space there is, or, or just anything in life for that matter. But uh, when you're looking at the budget, it's hard to kind of write it all down and everything. So I was searching online and Purex Performance, which also makes space-saving racks for your garage gym. We'll talk about them in a later video. We have a past video comparing the Folding My Rack from Force USA to the Purex Performance products. And they stack up really, really nicely and are really cool, innovative products. But they have something very useful for this video, a calculator. It's a home or garage gym calculator, which calculates the time that you would spend the cost and all that stuff of going to a gym. So say for instance, you go to Planet Fitness, black card, say two people, that's 50 bucks a month. So 25, they raised it from 20 bucks to 25. It's 50 bucks now. Then it takes into account how many miles you drive and how much your gas is, like the average price of a gallon of gas, uh, the time it takes for you to get to the gym, things like that. There's all these parameters and it automatically calculates how much you would spend going to a Planet Fitness or another gym every single day. So you can go three day, four day, five day. I did seven days a week because we work out seven days a week. And it turned out to show how much potentially your budget will be for that over a one year, two year or whatever multiple year period that you wanted to input that data to see how much time it would take for the gym equipment or any equipment you buy for your home gym to pay for itself. So that right there, I'm gonna put the link in the description, is an excellent resource uh, for you to figure out off the bat, is it worth it to do this or should I still pay for my gym membership? 
So let's talk about space. This is probably right up there with budget and maybe even more important than the budget because if you don't have the space for something, it's going to be a nightmare. So you need to make sure that you measure the space that you're putting any piece of equipment in or potentially if you want to expand and add multiple pieces of equipment, you need to measure the space. We have a video up here where I kind of unscientifically put the cylinders from the power block dumbbells, mark those off after using a tape measure to see if I could fit the Force USA G15 Pro. Turns out it did fit, but you have to really consider other things, not just the size of say the all-in-one trainer, the G15, for example. You have to think about I have to go to the sides to get the plates. I might have to go behind this thing. There might be an outlet. There might be all these things. You don't want the width of the all-in-one trainer or any rack, for that example, to be touching the walls with the barbell on there or the Smith machine, and you're not even able to load the plates onto the Smith machine, or you're not able to get behind the all-in-one trainer. I buffered enough in the garage stream 1.0 to make sure that G15 was number one, centered for the assembly, because once they assemble it, they can't take it, it's too much to take it apart. So you gotta make sure also, not only measuring that, but marking off the center where you wanna put stuff, almost making a blueprint of the area, mock blueprint to see where things can be placed. And there's actually software out there, and can't think of it off the top of my head, I'll B-roll it in if I find it, where you can actually do like a home planning, but you use that software to do your home gym planning and it's 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 pretty cool so it's a pretty fun experience but you really definitely need to do the preparation not only with the budget obviously but the space is super important to make sure that you're not doing any of that wrong because when they deliver that big pallet of equipment and you have it assembled and realized oh i made a mistake this isn't gonna fit well you can imagine what it's gonna be like to disassemble it send it back and do all that stuff and that measure first was a measure twice cut once measure twice measure three times don't measure twice because you're not cutting anything measure twice measure three times and then order and assemble so let's talk about cleaning and this might seem like well of course you're going to keep the area clean or try to clean the equipment but when you sweat as much as i do and we have carpet here on the floor it can tend to get pretty pretty uh <laughs> I don't even know the word for it. <laughs> I just, I sweat a lot and I even sweat when I make these videos and to have rug, we had flooring above the rug, which didn't look aesthetically great. And also then it was hard to clean sometimes. And then we had to get under the, the mat and then clean the rug. That wasn't very easy at all either. If you have wood floor, tile floor, stuff like that, concrete, like what we have in the garage gym, it's a little easier to maintain and there's not as much sweat and gym odor. That's what I'm trying to say, sweat and gym odor in the place. But when you have a home gym and you're in say a second bedroom or we have the main living space, you have to be mindful of that because it's a gym and you have to clean and maintain and do all that stuff. And if you're coming from a Planet Fitness or you know 24 hour fitness or anytime fitness or whatever other gyms where they clean and disinfect and do all these other things to keep not only everything clean and sterilized as much as possible, but also gym odor. They keep the gym odor out of, gym owner, I'm the gym owner, the gym odor out of the space. So when you own your own home gym, and sometimes it's, it's shocking to people because they're not used to being on a maintenance and cleaning schedule with any gym space, and you have to do it sometimes almost daily, meaning vacuum, uh, steam clean if it's a rug, steam mop if it's, a, if it's a floor, wipe down the equipment, do all that stuff. Um, and some people aren't ready for that. They just want to show up, work out, let somebody else deal with that, let somebody else maintain and clean, and that's fine. That's a consideration with the budget and space chapters in this video. So you have to consider that. So this last one might seem really weird because I just said a couple times during the course of this video, that we have two garage gyms, not just one. But we, if we didn't have the business, we would take an absolute minimalism approach to our home gym or garage gym, whatever it might be. Uh, it would be a buy once, cry once kind of scenario where we would buy maybe that one piece of equipment, like an all-in-one trainer, 
that can do everything that we need. Uh, but we would definitely be more minimalistic with everything that we do if we didn't have the fitness business. And we try to embrace minimalism throughout our life, no matter what. It simplifies things. But when you're running a fitness brand, a fitness business, and having content like this, I needed to expand the business, as I explained in the Garage Gym 2.0 tour, that I just needed to expand it. And this was the most practical and, and frugal way to do it without running out of commercial space. Uh, but taking an approach of minimalism will keep you from overbuying, from overspending, from filling up a space too quickly with stuff that you do not need. So what I would do is you make that one big purchase, say on an all-in-one trader, a power rack, something that's going to be the main central hub of your home gym, and then you use it. And I would say use it for at least a month. Now, does this apply to cardio? Maybe you get that one and then you get a piece of cardio. And those are the only two pieces of equipment you have for at least a month. If you could stretch out to three months or six months or a year, if you buy those one or two pieces of equipment and you say, let's see how this works out for a year. And if we truly need another piece, we will get it. So, and obviously an all in one trainer or a power rack uh, with attachments and stuff like that, it's probably the best way to go for your first piece of equipment, especially if you're going to lift. Uh, if you're going to go the cardio route, you can always get stuff like Peloton uh, cycle. You know, they have rowers. They have other things that could be your central and main thing. Also fight camp with the boxing. Uh, but that reminds me, this might have been the last thing, but it's not the last thing because I have a bonus one, just a bonus one that just made me remind myself of that bonus one that I needed to give to you guys. Super, super important in certain situations. But getting back to the minimalism, uh, it's better to go slow. I know people tend, like myself, the eyes are bigger than the stomach, but you need to move slowly into this and build slowly because it's a lot of fun to have that journey to build your own gym space. And it's really cool. And I like to enjoy it. So if you pace it out or spread it out over months, uh, you'll get to enjoy it and know that you truly, really, I'm using air quotes because you think you need it, but you might not need that next piece of equipment as much as you think. All right, here's a bonus one to think about. This is strictly for people that are in apartments. And this is a lot of things to consider within the apartment. So the apartment uh, category will be its own chapter during this video where we talk about what it's like to have a home gym in the apartment. Number one thing is you're going to have to be on the ground floor. We are on the second floor, or like the, the street level floor, and we want to build out the gym uh, and said we can't do this. Thank God the unit right below us, which was ground level, below street level, had nothing but concrete under the uh, under the rug and what other, other padding there was. It wasn't even a subfloor. It was just concrete. So we knew we could build a gym, have weights, do all that stuff, and also we weren't above neighbors where they would hear us lifting. Uh, that's the least of your worries because most apartment subfloors are not all that great. So if you put uh, uh, something like we had a G6 with the weight stacks, which weighed 992 pounds, then we had plates, then we had the bench, then we had cardio, then we were lifting all that, then we were walking around. There's all sorts of stuff that can go wrong and you do not want to literally come crashing down into another unit. So there's a safety concern that you have to think about in an apartment uh, that you will definitely need to be on the ground floor with that type of setup. Now, if you go for a Tempo Studio, if you go for a Nordic Track Vault, if you go for a Tonal uh, or whatever, whatever other smart connected pieces of equipment that are not very heavy, the Tonal can go right up against the wall it uses digital weight. The temple uses real weight, but it's not super heavy. And also it can be moved around in the different parts of your apartment. So these are space saving uh, solutions. You could fit a piece of cardio too, but I wouldn't recommend maybe a curved treadmill might be a little too heavy combined with our stuff, or it might be fine. Um, another consideration obviously is if you're getting the equipment delivered, we had steps that were up and down. It took forever to get things in and out of the apartment. Um, and that was on the ground floor. So these are, these are things that you need to consider. Uh, 
delivering a tonal on a second, third, fourth floor or a high rise condo is not such a big deal. Uh, delivering an all in one trainer, that's a pretty big deal. So there's lots of caveats with this, but there's also lots of solutions if you're in an apartment and you want a home gym. Some of them might be costly. Some of them might be connected fitness uh, products that have subscriptions attached to them, but also they're pretty beefy and pretty mature uh, fitness services that like Tempo Studio that I mentioned and also Tonal are probably two of the top ones outside of say a Peloton for cardio and other workouts that are attached to the Peloton subscription. So that's something to consider. Also, not as much of a safety thing, but also consideration and courtesy. Uh, you have neighbors. If you're in an apartment, you have neighbors. You're going to have to consider the noise factor when you work out, where you're placed, how thin the walls are, or even the floor if you're not going to be on the ground floor. If you're going to work out with a tonal on the third floor, but the walls are super thin and your neighbors can hear you working out, it's say 3 30, 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, that's something you need to consider. We had neighbors that never heard us. We locked out because we were on the bottom floor, concrete under us, no reverberation of sound from lifting, but also the walls. We, we only had really, I think, one neighbor next to us, and then the other one was a concrete wall and then a courtyard. So we, we lucked out where we were at. We were really blessed and uh, very, very grateful for the spot we had. But most people in the apartments don't have that luxury, don't have that that luck. So you have to consider that. So for apartment living, there's a whole different set of circumstances and considerations because you have many neighbors. So you're going to have to really think about that before you build out your home, or should I say your apartment gym. So that about does it for this video. Hopefully you found the information and in my experience that I share with you useful. If you have, please subscribe, click the bell to get notified. Also comment below, give me some tips and tricks, home gym related, garage gym related. Like I said, the video on the garage gym on things to consider when building your garage gym will be coming soon. So please stay subscribed and notified for that. Also, I talked about different products during the course of this video. We do have affiliate links and codes in the description below. When you purchase, most times you will save money, but if you don't, you still support the content here at Stevie Richards Fitness. We try to get you the best value for your money, but more importantly than that, we try to educate the consumer so you can make the best decision and so your dollar goes as far as possible. Most importantly, God bless each and every one of you. Have a great day. I got my head.